Hello and welcome. Today, I'll be talking to you about some of the things that you would get with Instabug that you're currently missing using Firebase. Through Instabug, you can monitor your application's overall health and quality based on the end user's experiences. Each session that happens on your application, Instabug is able to classify it to fall into one of four main buckets. Either it's a crashing session, a frustrating session, a tolerable session, or a satisfying session. Instabug classifies each session to fall into one of these four main buckets based on the performance metrics that we collect, whether it was app launch time, screen loading time, or the time it took for a network to return a response. With all that being considered, we give you one aptic score that gives you the ability to, 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 to understand that your application's quality based on the end user's experiences. So it's a score between zero and one. The closer it is to one, the better your application end user experiences are. So you can select only the app versions that you need to monitor and track, or you can also see the aptic score aggregated that aggregates the performance and stability across all the app versions um, to understand the performance and stability across multiple app versions. You can also monitor your application's aptic score throughout time, because if there are any sudden dips in performance, you can also zoom in and find out the root cause if it was related to maybe app launch time or a specific screen that takes too long to load or so on. So you can really monitor your application's performance and if any performance issues that arise, you can also zoom in and find out the root cause of them. Through our releases page, you can also monitor the performance of specific releases. These can be your top releases or maybe your latest ones. You can find the most important metrics for each release all in one place and are very easily accessible. So you can see the version adoption, the aptic score, the crash free sessions, and other performance metrics that we collect. You can also compare adopted, adopted app versions through the filter, and you, you can check the change indicators so you can see if each metric got better or worse. Instable can help you prioritize the issues that you want to work on even better. For starters, you can filter and see the, the crashes or the issues that are affecting a certain feature flag or a certain experiment. One other thing you can do is that you can automatically assign issues to a specific team, and then later on, this a member from this team can go onto the dashboard, filter by their associated team, and only see the issues associated with their team. Let's see an example. So right here, I have a team called the homepage. And now I've set a condition that whenever a crash or an issue comes from the homepage package or from the file name, which is the homepage class, I want to automatically assign those crashes to my homepage team. So then later on, when the home when a, when a member from the homepage team comes in and then filters by the home page team, they're only going to see the, the crashes associated with their file or their package. One other way you can prioritize the issues that you want to work on is by the crash or issue type. One thing to note over here is that we cover more issues or provide you with visibility over more issues than Firebase Crash Analytics. One specific crash type that you currently don't have visibility over using Firebase is the out of memory crashes for, for iOS. So we obviously have covered different types of crashes as well. We have the fatal crashes, Application not responding, non-fatal crashes, which is like error logging. And we just launched something that's called user termination. Whenever your user terminates your application and then relaunches it within 30 seconds, which is usually a proxy for frustration. We captured that along with all the details you need to understand the issue there or why they were frustrated and be able to reproduce it. Also, we captured something that's called the app hangs. So whenever the application hangs for more than three seconds, we're able to capture this incident and give you all the debugging details in order for you to easily reproduce the issue. So we pretty much cover all the stability issues that your, that your application might suffer from and give you all the debugging context you need in order to easily reproduce and fix the, those issues. So now that we've prioritized which crash we want to work on, we can now see what type of debugging details or what context do we provide with each crash or each issue. So let's take this ANR for example. Once you click on a crash, you go to the patterns page or the aggregations page where you see some aggregated data about this crash to understand how it's been affecting different um, segments or different, um, different patterns of your users. So for example, you can see how this crash has been affecting different app versions over time, and you can see even the aggregated information for that. You can see how it's affecting different app versions, the occurrences per app version, and the adoption rate per app version. You can see how it's affecting different devices, different operating systems, but what's really important to note over here is you can see how it's been affecting different screens. So it's if, if maybe it's affecting, it's majorly affecting one of your most important screens, like a payment screen, then you want to optimize and solve this crash for that. 
you can also view how this crash has been affecting different feature flags or different experiments. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you get to the stack trace section where you can view the stack trace and every crash reporter gives that type of information. Sometimes all these all this information is not enough in order to reproduce the crash. Um, and that's why we go as another layer deeper to the occurrences page to provide you with all the context you need in order in order to find the root cause and reproduce the issue. So over here, you see all the occurrences details, like the average and device operating system, current view, and all the steps or all the details that you might need. If I scroll down a little bit more, you get to the session profiler section, where you see the last 60 seconds of the session um, about the memory storage, connectivity, battery, and orientation. So you're able to understand the state that the device was in before this crash or this issue occurred. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, I get to the report log section, where you see different types of logs that we capture. So you see the user steps that the user did, the console logs that are in your code, and even the network logs. We capture each network request that happened inside uh, your application during that session, and you can view more information about it by expanding it and seeing exactly what happened or what occurred. I saved the best for last. We have something that's called the repro steps, which easily helps your developers reproduce the issue by seeing each screen that the user visited along with each activity that the user did on each specific screen. So with this, they can easily um, reproduce the user session to reproduce the issue. And if you can reproduce the issue, you can ultimately um, solve it. And this is up to the point that the application crashed. So this is the type of debugging information you can expect with each crash and each issue. You can expect that with ANRs, with fatal crashes, non-fatal crashes, user terminations, and app hangs. Today, we briefly talked about monitoring, prioritization, and debugging. There are way more details that we can talk about. So if you've liked what you've seen, please book a demo, and we'll happily discuss each project in more details. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.